liftoff. So we're going to start with uh, Inventor 2013. And everything up here is going to look pretty uh, similar to other softwares. So you have new file, open, existing files. And there's something else here called projects. What Inventor likes to do is try and manage your file, your file system. So if you're working on one project and all the parts that you create are just in one project, you're going to set it up that way. And it won't let you move to another project until you close all those files out. It's trying to watch jog so that you don't save your parts into the wrong spot. Okay? We'll talk more about projects in a, in a second. What I want you to do is go to Tools and Application Options. When we go to this, we're going to go to the Sketch Setup. So there are several different things we're going to look at, but Sketch is one of the most important ones. When you're in Sketcher in Inventor, do you want your lines to act parallel and perpendicular or horizontal and vertical? Upon the first assumption, for me, I like for them to assume that they're horizontal and vertical. So I'll leave that the same way. When you dimension the same dimension twice, does it want to apply a driven dimension? That means it's reference dimension in parentheses, and it's driven by the other dimension. Or do you want to just it to just warn you that it's already dimensioned and you're about to overconstrain it? So that's what this means. Um, we'll just stick with the standard spline fit method. Here are the some of the most important ones. When you put a dimension in. You're not, in Inventor, you're not going to be drawing things exactly the size. You're going to be drawing the shape of it and then putting a dimension in and then it changes the size. It's a, it's a different dynamic than AutoCAD. So when you go in and you put a dimension in, as soon as you create one, this little check mark, check mark right here says, I want to automatically edit that because it's never going to be right. And that, that's a really quick thing. Otherwise, you have to go and put it in and then double click it and change it. So it saves you some steps. The other things are right here. Auto project part origin on sketch create. So we're going to leave that as is. Look at the sketch plane whenever you're sketching on it. Let's say I have a part and I'm going to sketch on the side of it to make a cut. It will automatically flip it and orient it correct, correctly on that side. So that's a good thing. Over here. I took off grid lines and major grid lines. I don't want to see any grid on my screen because there's no sense in, I mean, we don't draw to a grid. We're drawing to dimensions and they're, and they're all different. So if you guys look at this, make sure that your system is set up this way. This enable heads up display enables all the screens on Inventor to, to give you that dynamic input that AutoCAD does. It asks you exactly what it wants right on the screen. So that's what heads up display is. Does anyone need more time on that? When we go to the part tab, the first thing that you're going to do when you create a new part is you have to have a sketch before you can do anything. You have to have a sketch before you can solidify it and give it some depth. So it sketch on new part creation. Do you want it to automatically flip you into your first sketch? Normally, yes. This is what we use as a default. And we're going to be looking at it as if we're looking at an AutoCAD screen. It uses the X and Y plane. So it's just going to be the same coordinate system as you're used to in AutoCAD. But we're going to be looking at the X, Y plane. Colors is another one that I like to change. And what you're doing is you're actually updating your roaming profile. So it will be the same way while you're here. However, we can export an application option file that you can import at home. And it will bring all these settings in there. So you don't have to go through this again. If you need to go through this again, you can watch this video. But right here, I like high contrast. I'm back to the old AutoCAD classic colors. Black background. Colors popping at me because my eyes are old and it's a lot easier on my eyes. So you can make any of these your background. Now when would you want to use presentation? Uh, yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? When you're doing presentations. So whenever you're putting like a screenshot 
of one of your models, let's say your table ID or something like that, into a presentation like a, a PowerPoint presentation. You don't want a big blue background and then you've got a white paper. You just let it all blend together and your, your part just looks like it pops off the paper. So that's when you might use that. Um, you can use um, a gradient if you want to. But I just, I, I just use mine on high contrast one color. And you can set that up however you like. That's kind of up to you.